Hi everyone, I'm Jan with the Prince George County Memorial Library System. Thank you for joining us for another Children's Readers Advisory. My first story is called The True Definition of Neva Bean, and the story is by Christine Kendall. She also wrote the book Writing Chance, which was nominated for a NAACP Image Award in the category of Outstanding Literature Work for Youth and Teens. In this coming of age story, 12 year old Neva's world is changing. She struggles with her ever changing body, her friendships, and her family who want to stay strong among the turbulent backdrop of activism across generations. Nina Neva finds comfort in words and their meaning. Using her personal beloved dictionary, Neva must discover the best way to define herself. And again, this is called The True Definition of Neva Bean. Okay. My next book, I think it's so funny. This is called Bark versus Snark. And it is another Arthur and Queenie book. And it's by Ste Spencer Quinn. And he, as I said, it's another Arthur and Queenie book. And also he has written another series called Bower and Birdie, which is a cat and dog series. And I find this, I find these stories just so hysterical. What I'm gonna do is just read a little paragraph that I think is hysterical because I can see cat cats thinking this. And by the way, it, goes from one chapter that's in Arthur's voice and the other being Queenie's voice. So this is Queenie's voice. In those moments down at the pond, and not just at the pond, but in the pond, the horror cast into the water, my whole body, even my head dunked right under, I was totally immersed in water, all of me, has anything worse happened to anyone ever? I think that is so funny, sorry. Anyway, so to talk a little bit more about the book, there's a fair in town and it has two contests happening, a beauty contest for cats and a frisbee contest for the fastest dog. Who will win? While well, Queenie is a shoe in for the beauty contest, but can Arthur win the frisbee contest, especially when he won't chase anything more than something smelling like bacon? But then when Harmony and Bro get home, they notice Queenie acting strangely. She's super friendly and cuddly, not like her usual cat self at all. Did something happen at the beauty contest? And can Arthur win the frisbee contest? Only one way to find out. Read this funny story. And again, this is Bark, Bark versus Snark. And then my next story is called Ephron Divided. And the author is Anestu. Ernesto C. Snorris. As an author, he believes in the importance of providing today's youth with an honest de depiction of characters that look like him. Efren often worries about his parents. He was born here in this country, but his parents are illegally illegal. Efren must keep this a secret and is devastated when Ice deports his mother. Now he must become the man of the family while his father works two jobs and tries to bring home Efren's mother. Find out what Efren must go through as he works to get his mother back home. And again, this book is called Efren Divided. And then my next story Sorry about the glare, guys. This one is called Show Me a Sign. And this is by author, sorry, 
and Claire Lizotto. Lizotti. This book is definitely an, another own voice story. The author is a deaf woman with a capital D and a librarian, and she examines what it means to be able-bodied by looking at our own core beliefs. This, not, this novel takes place in the 19th century when Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts had a thriving deaf community. Mary and her family are proud deaf people who don't consider the deafness an, an issue. Then a young scientist named Andrew comes to Martha's Vineyard to try and, and determine what the cause of so many people's deafness. So he kidnaps Mary as a live specimen and brings her to Boston. She sees how other deaf people are unable to communicate because of the ignorance of hearing people. Find out how Mary struggles from, to free herself from Andrew's clutches and get home to Martha's Vineyard and her family. And again, this book is called Show Me a Sign. My next book is called Jayla Jumps In. And this story is by Joy Jones. And Miss Jones started her own double dots team called the DC Retro Jumpers. And DC does stand for Washington, DC. Have you ever tried double dutching, double dutch jumping? I have. And it's not easy because you're not just jumping, you're using, you have to use two jump ropes. Jayla's mother is on doctor's orders to lower her blood pressure. So Jayla is shocked to learn that her mother was once a double jump, double dutch champion. A champion in double dutch jumping? All you're doing is just jumping rope, as I said. So to find a way to stand out in her big family, Jayla decides to take up double dutch jumping. In the hopes of becoming a champion herself, Jayla finds out that double dutch is more than just jumping. Does she have it, what it takes to be a champion herself? Let's find out by reading this story. Jayla jumps in. Another own voice story. And now I have another own voice story. This is called, Can You See Me? And this story is by Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcote. And the main character, Telly, Tally, is artistic, just like the author, Libby S Scott. And Anne M. Martin, who's a Newbery Honor author, states, this glimpse into the world of a young artistic girl is astonishingly insightful and honest. Tally struggles to fit in are heart-wrenching and her victories are glorious. Tally starts middle school with an itchy uniform and struggles to act normal. She feels lonely without her best, best friend, Layla. Layla isn't in, isn't in any of the same classes and Layla starts to hang out with new friends. So the question now becomes, can Tally find her own voice? Does she want to make new friends? And can she finally find a way to connect back up with Layla? And again, this stor story is called, Can You See Me? Okay. This book is called Triple Threat by Mike Lip Lupica. And sorry about that. I, yeah, anyway. Okay. He has written many excellent books about sports, and this is his newest one. 12 year old Alex decides to try out for the middle school football team. Doesn't really seem like a problem, right? Well, Alex is a girl trying out for the boys team. Alex wants to be 
the quarterback, but she saw the coach won't take her seriously. Well, when Alex makes a team, she's also sure she'll have no playing time since the team already has a great quarterback. Alex might, must fight against sexism, sexism with the coach, her team, and all the teams they play. Can she get anything? She, can she get any time on the field? Will the team make the championship? Well, there's actually only one way to find out. And again, this book is called Triple Threat. My next book is called City Spies by James Ponty. Again, it's called City Spies. And let's see what I have here. And Mr. Ponty is an Edgar Award author. This award is named after Edgar Allan Poe and is given out yearly to the best mystery books for adult, teens, and children's categories. Sarah is a hacker and she was found out when she broke into the New York City juvenile justice system to expose her foster parents. Right before she goes to juvie, mother, a man, comes to take her to Scotland to become part of the secret young M16 agents. Along with four other kids from different parts of the world, they are honing their skills in such thing as breaking and entering, sleight of hand, hacking. So see how they can succeed in their mission in this story, because I'm thinking there's gonna be a sequel. I can't say for sure, but the way the book ends, I think there's gonna be a sequel. And then let's go on to, I'm gonna talk about my last two books together. One is, this first one is called Freddy Ramos Gets a Sidekick by Jacqueline Jules. And then this one is called Meet the Crew at the Zoo by Patricia Griff. I'm sorry, Patricia Riley Griff. And what I like about these books, they're, they're, real, they're really good for, you know, kids who are starting like first chapter books or those that are reluctant readers and have some trouble reading because there's, gonna, there's big writing, more pictures, and studies have shown that for students who don't like to read or beginning students, that the larger the print, the more that they are able to finish the book, tell you about the book, and if they have to stop in the middle for some reason, it's easier for them to find where they were when they stopped. So we have lots of good books like those too. Those are just two examples. Well, anyway, I want to thank you for joining me for another Children's Reader's Advisor. Thank you. On to my next book. This is called A Dog-Friendly Town. As usual, I'm getting a lot of glare. And it is by Jennifer, I'm sorry, Josephine Cameron. If you love dogs and a good mystery, this book is for you. Epic's parents own a dog-friendly hotel, Piero del Mar in Carmelito, California, which now has been named America's number one dog-friendly town. So what could be better? Hmm. Everything is going great until a famous dog's and jewel-encrusted collar goes missing. All the guests are suspects. Epic and his new friends must find the guilty party before the hotel gets a bad reputation. Do 12-year-old Epic and his friends have a nice time? I'm sorry, have enough time? You'll find out in this funny story. And let me just show you the title one more time without too much glare. A Dog Friendly Hotel. Okay, my next book is called Tranosaurus Rex by Stuart Gibbs. And then this is part of 
a, his series called Fun Jungle. Now you don't have to read each book in order. It's what we call a standalone book. Well, Tammy needs to solve his most improbable mystery yet, a missing 500 pound head of a 25 million year old dinosaur lovingly called Minerva has gone missing. How could anyone move that size head, especially in the middle of a rainstorm? Also now, Teddy needs to deal with the Boxdale twins. They have an illegal purchase anaconda, a snake, and needs Teddy's help. Does this case have anything to do with Minerva's missing head? I think you will enjoy this story. I know I did. And again, this is called Tyrannosaurus Rex, as in I'm going to wreck this. Anyway, so let's go on to this book. It is called The Newspaper Club by Beth Verbella. And Let's see. After moving to a small, sleepy town, Nellie, the daughter of two newspaper reporters, starts hearing rumors of vandalism and thefts. Everyone has their own theory, but Nellie isn't sure about any of those theories. Since the local newspaper has closed, she has no way to find the facts and decides to start her own newspaper. Of course, Nellie can't do this by herself, and some of the kids in the neighborhood who show up to help aren't her favorite people. So there's only one way to find out. Yes, you need to read the book, and this book also happens to be the start of a new series called The Newspaper Club. I think you'll like this. And by the way, before I go on, I just want to um, share something with you because you can find many of these books online. I want to show you how to get onto it. So you would get into our website, pgcmls.info. If you can't remember the letters, just remember. Prince George County Memorial Library System. You can do a search and you'll come up with um, our link. And then you would go to Overdrive, click on that. And then you can search. You can search for a title. You can search under subjects, collection, collections, kids books, teen books, books in Spanish. And the nice thing about ebooks when you download them you don't have to worry like oh you know i forgot to return it because you choose whether you want it for seven days 14 days or 21 days and if you downloaded it right this second then seven 14 21 days later at right this second it automatically disappears from your card so no worries about oh I dropped it in the water. Oh, my dog ate it. Oh, I can't find it. So that's that's a really nice thing about ebooks.